Bring up the little big horn. Getting in with Steve's pass because yeah. he is. Uh, Good morning. Hi. How are you? This is me. That's him. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Great. Thank you. Thank you. We've just arrived to the battlefield. We're going to the visitor center. Get a little bit more information about what took place here. But after watching those two documentaries, I got a pretty solid feeling of what took place. We'll be talking about it as we go. It's just after watching the documentaries and just looking out at this is just I, I, I don't know, I can't explain it. check out the visitor center, get a feel for the lay of the land and go over the paperwork they gave us and we'll have a better understanding of where to start. Custer finished last in his class at West Point, not because he was a bad student, he was an excellent student, brilliant, intelligent, but he didn't follow rules very well. He had more demerits that counted against him than any cadet ever in the history of West Point and still stands today. It's interesting, this is from the documentary we watched last night on Unraveling the Mystery. These are all artifacts that they found on the battlefield. The Indian bracelet, the arrowheads, saddle rings, oh my god, a boot. They talk about the firing pin marks on the shells that help tell the story of where people were. It's, it's sort of like a fingerprint. No two shells will have the same, well, the same firing pin mark unless it came from the same gun. So they're able to follow where the gun, that particular soldier with his gun, was throughout the battle so they could see when they were following protocol and when they fell away from protocol. That's where a lot of the fighting went and we're gonna see there's markers that mark where each man fell in this battle. Up here is like the last stand hill where Custer and the last handful of his men fell before killed. Um, there is a plaque for each spot where they had fallen. We're going to take a look at that right now. But understanding protocol of battle procedures, they basically, everything they'd broken down at this point, they're all kind of clumped in this grouping, which probably was in a sense their last holdout. Uh, according to the archaeologists, the video that we saw last night, not a lot of cartridges from here. They were probably out of ammunition by this point, doing the best they could just to, to, stay, alive. to stay alive or do a last fight going down fighting. Boston Custer, civilian that was one of the, his ancestors, or one of his family members, Arthur Reed, also a civilian. There were some civilians left out here as well. Don started to say, man, I've heard her. There was five Custer family members that were part of this fight on this hill. <clears throat> and uh, the fighting was brutal, absolutely brutal. 
Um, the Indians would attack first with their carbines. Number one, Custer's men were outgunned in short range battle. Long range battle, the carbines that the, that the cavalry used would work semi-efficiently in long range fighting, but they were single shot. The Indians had repeater rifles that uh, in a test firing, the Indians would have been able to have gotten off 13 to 14 shots for every four shots the cavalry man was able to get. On top of that, they were grossly outnumbered. Though there was a total of 600 of the 7th Cavalry that was here, only 200 were in the major fight. So you had 200 against almost 2,000 Lakota and Sioux warriors with repeater rifles, bows and arrows, and revolvers fighting against cavalrymen that only had revolvers and single shot carbines. That one black and then plaque is where George Custer stood in his last stand, you might say, where he fell with his men around him. If you can imagine Indians charging up the hill as they're standing ground trying to fight them off with very little ammunition left, if any. I'm going to make a proposition of my own theory as I've seen it here. The grouping of Custer's men on this hill truly looks like it was a last stand. They were all grouped together when they went down. The brutality of the attack, watching their fellow comrades um, getting bodies dismembered, heads bashed in with clubs, um, scalped, no mercy of any kind shown. There is a number of markers that head out in another direction we'll take a look at of what looks like a frantic retreat of some of the ones that were left. Custer did follow directions. He was following directive by standing and trying to finish what he started, but obviously it was a losing battle from the very beginning. But if you can only imagine that handful that saw Custer and all these people go down in such a brutal way, I can only imagine their only thought was, we gotta get out of here. <laughs> all the soldiers that... So the remains of about 220 soldiers, scouts, and civilians are buried around the base of the memorial. General Custer was buried here originally, but then in 1877 um, he was removed from here and then uh, reinterned and buried at West Point. He was a West Point graduate, as I mentioned before, last in his class, but once again, not because he was a bad soldier, because he could not follow directions when he wasn't being a soldier. <laughs> so it wasn't all about just the soldiers that fought and died here. When you think about it, the soldiers were fighting a cause that was handed down by the U.S. government. Um, what you need to understand is the U.S. government had granted all the land of the Dakota territories and the Black Hills to the Indians forever. It was a land grant given to them that they would be able to continue with their way of life on that land. A few years later, gold was discovered, and the government decided we want to keep the gold, so they demanded, uh, Grant demanded, that all of the Indians be rounded up and go back to their reservations. If they didn't do it by January 31st, they would all be hunted down as hostiles. Understand that December, uh, January 31st, it was still in the dead of winter. For them to have gotten the message or even try to get out at that point in time would have been disastrous for them anyway. But the sitting bull said, no, we are not going to go. This is granted us. This is our land. 
the government tried to buy it from them and they said it's not about the money it's about their way of life one thing that's little known that doesn't really show up in the history books is that our supreme court ruled that the land grab was unconstitutional that it needed to stay with the indians well lo and behold they did not stand up to that and then uh, a major major battles broke out as well ending in this so when you think about it the indians though they were brutal in what they did they were trying to preserve their life and their way of life having been you know driven off their own lands in a very hostile way as well so uh i got a feeling this is kind of a sacred area we're about to walk into so i'm going to go take a look at that but yes this is uh there are two sides to this story history here it's a sad sight I mean what battlefield isn't but you can see where a lot of people respect it and are I'm glad to see that yeah they, they show a lot of respect Okay, any final thoughts? Sobering. I just, it was learning that both the Indians, Native Americans, and the soldiers didn't run. They didn't. They, they they stood their grounds. They fought hard. Most of them. Most of them. There was <laughs> yes. the there was the area of retreat. Yeah, um, and that. and to be honest, that was. Um, but when you saw what they were actually up against, oh. um, it's hard to blame them for. It's for yeah, going. it's very hard to blame them for running. But even you know the great chiefs said you know what was it one of them had quoted, you know, I I don't lie about a dead man and saying that the city bull. Um city bull yeah, that Colonel Carl Co an Irishman <laughs> um, from Ireland and, and fought fought very, very hard and um, it was interesting that because of the bravery that he showed in fighting that they actually did not mutilate his body like they did a lot of the other soldiers and um, I think um, I think 
that was really something to be said. But um, very sobering, and, and, and uh, I, I, I want to come back. I want to, I want to see this again. You know, there's some. We should get a chance to come back before we leave. Yeah, I want to come back before we leave again. Um, we'll be here a few more days, and I do want to come back. And I think it's going to be. It's just a definite. Do not miss. Do not pass go. Do not collect three hundred dollars. Place. You know. It's, it's, it really is. It's um, amazing. I didn't expect it to be as good as it is. Yeah. I mean, it's it's a powerful uh, experience. I definitely recommend you some more research before you come see it. Absolutely. We watched the two documentaries. There's one more documentary I want to find. Uh, mm -hmm. They had it in there um, in the visitor center. It's um, the American Experience. Now, we watched The American Experience on George Custer, but there's also another American Experience on no. um, on um, Last Stand at Little Bighorn. And that one I definitely want to see. But we did see that one that was on the um, archaeological evidence and forensic evidence of um, what happened at the battle. So... I would highly recommend watch a couple of those documentaries uh, the night before you come out. So that's about. I, guess, and I think too the thing is, is that I noticed a lot of people weren't running around. Kids weren't running around. There was I was, just I was a impressed that people respect, gave us respect. A lot of respect shown, yeah. and I think that's really important. Well, it's hard not to be in awe when you see every single one of those white placard headstones oh, is gosh. where that person fell. Yeah. And there's a number of them that they couldn't identify. Yes. But because they were so badly mutilated. Now, they obviously knew they were part of the 7th Cavalry, but they didn't know if that was exactly who they thought it was. Because uh, the, the bodies were stripped, mutilated, dismembered, and... It, it was hard to really tell on a lot of them. And there's, I mean, when you look at the number of, of markers, yeah. But when you think how many hundreds and hundreds of more that weren't marked. Right. That, that are not They may not even found, so. They may not even been found, so. Um, definitely a, a do not miss experience. And I would even, if, if it means going out of your way a little bit to see it, go out of your way. Yeah. Uh, come out here and see this. This is really, really pretty amazing. It is. It really is. So now we're going to go into the trading post. Yes, there's a trading see. post, and it has and Indian tacos. <laughs> but we just ate, so I doubt we're going to get Indian tacos today. I think we'll but come back maybe we may, you know, for dinner or something. I'm hoping to come back. We'll come back, and if we do, we'll bring you with us. Yeah. Okay, let's go check it out. All right. Shopping time. <laughs> So we are getting out because we just had two tour buses and a school bus, and one of the tour buses is full of Marines, former Marines, uh, older than me Marines. So let's go ahead and get on out of here. All right, so a couple days ago, Hatka and I went for a walk up this path uh, up a hill. That's the hill right there. And you probably can't quite see it, but there's a flag on the top. At the base of the flagpole was a rock garden. So, in true fashion, the East Korean Tech Academy, we had a rock garden. And I felt very compelled to find a couple of rocks, and Don and I each painted our own rock. Here's Don and her rock. I'll show you mine in a minute, but unfortunately, I cannot hold on to Atka and his go go stick and the GoPro all at the same time and show you a rock. So we get up to the path to the flagpole and show you my rock as we plant them. Yes. We should plant a rock for the husbands. Yeah, and 
Yeah, I think they need their own rock. They need their own rock. Only I think we should color it for them because I know if Atka did it, it would be yellow. <laughs> That's horrible. <laughs> True. Right here. It's a small rock garden. A flag. A rock garden. Huh. Yeah. Okay, so there's our ro Whoops. my rock. So it's for both of us. Our road to Camelot. I got our YouTube channel on the back in case it gets flipped. Okay, and, and rock. my rock. And it's interesting how many people just put their names um, or where they're from or travel on, things like that. And I just felt that this was really kind of... Important cool. right now. Yes. <laughs> yes. So let's go ahead and, and then of place. course I, I have to throw in the Irish. Okay. Uh, so there we go. Safe travels. Cilantro. I'll take care. I'll take. So. I'll take Aaron. I'll take Yadka. <laughs> Sorry, Aaron. I'll take Yadka. Go and let him go. Aaron complains enough. As it is. <laughs> See, Poor guy. I don't just call you the dog's name. I call the dog your name. All right. <laughs> go and let go. I got him. I got him. Go okay. ahead and place yours. Whoa! Oh, I thought you said you had I him. I did, but you didn't expect him to drag me. Go ahead and place your rock. Okay, so here's my rock, and I'm gonna put it right here at the base, where everybody can read peace, love, and hope, and understanding. And that one's really faded, so I'm gonna push it down a little bit and put mine right Oop, there. Well. All right. Okay. Don't. Rocks are do, placed. Don't, don't, do, don't you even think about it. All right. <laughs> so that's it for this episode. We're going to end it here. Mm -hmm. uh, finishing up with the um, Little Bighorn Battlefield. Yeah. What an experience. Very much so. I was very moved by it. Yeah. It was, it was really a, an amazing, amazing experience. Something not to miss. Oh, absolutely. A must-see. So, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. I took, <laughs> I took your line. No, I, I did no. thumbs up and subscribe. Yes, make sure you subscribe. If you really like it, hit that bell and we'll let you know the next time we post, which is every Sunday at, at 2 o'clock. Yes. And tell all of your friends. We are, uh, subscri subscriptions are going up. Yeah. We're aiming for that 1,000 magic mark, so please help us out Absolutely. and tell all your friends and family, jump on there and watch the videos and subscribe. Yep, subscribe and hit the bell. Right, so until next time, uh, be safe and traveling. Slancha.